And who knows, you know, <clears throat> what form or shape or visitation is going to be next for, in your journey. <laughs> to me, um, the hum is the vibrational soup that we're in. And I call it a soup because it comes from everywhere. I was thinking about the hum as I walked. What is the hum? And I was thinking the hum for me is um, creative flow. And I was listening to the creek, the water, the melting water, and was saying, this is the hum. This is the hum. It goes through everything. It penetrates everything. It is. And it, and it flows. And to me, vibration is, is all of that. It's just the, the flow of... Um, so the hum to me is um, the natural processes. It's, the, it's thought. It's, um, it's that creativity. When I think about why humankind is here, I feel like the Creator said, and everything is possible. And so humankind will be able to express and explore and know and just keep going forever, eternity. And I think those were the original ideas of why humankind was here. Because when you think about it, those buffalo were com completely content just grazing out there in the sage and in the sunshine and whatever, and that's their life, and it's fine. But we have the ability to observe that and then observe something else and something else and see the connectedness of all things. What a gift mankind has. It's just precious. It's just precious. And all we have to do is be grateful for it. That's the common denominator. So that's why the walk was so special for me today, because it let me see, look at me and look at everything around me. And my heart was doing this joy thing, and all of a sudden this little bird just sang its heart out. Like, I'm in the hum. I understand. I know who you are. I'm reading your vibration. I'm reading yours too, bird. I feel just like what you just said. That's the hum. That's what it seems to me. And so it all comes. It just keeps coming and keep developing and keep happening. <laughs> um, and what a joy to be a part of it. Be able to express it, hear it, know it. That's the highest, I think. And I thought that this morning when I was walking up El Salto, you see some uh, probably millionaire type homes on the way up there. And I'm looking at their view, and I'm going, oh, in, you know, 360, it's just beautiful. You wake up every morning and, and see that. What would it be like to do that every morning? And then I laughed, and I said, but I don't have to have that home. I just can walk up El Salto, and I can have it all. And I can choose the day I want to do it. <laughs> And it will be beautiful. And then cars kept racing by, and I, I mean, on this little road, what's the hurry? Where are they all going in such a hurry? What is man doing? They're just on some kind of a lockstep of go, 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 go. And, um, and I just meandered from one side of the road to the other, from one dog to another. <laughs> And listening to the water, the whole time, the water, that was what was so beautiful. 
because um, the snow was melting and running in little rivulets along the highway. And so the whole sound, the hum of everything was water. And that was just such a good feeling. Mm -hmm. Like I was in the flow, I was in part of, part of everything. I felt like the droplets. Just like here in the gallery looking at the melting snow running down the window pane here that, that looks like an art piece. <laughs> and it's fabulous. <laughs> All I had to do was tell them how beautiful or lovely or handsome or whatever they were and it went to their head immediately and, <laughs> and I didn't have to worry about it. <clears throat> Although the time I walked up there before I went to the left and went toward the waterfall, and um, there were some vicious dogs up there. So um, they came up the, they weren't behind a fence, they weren't tethered or anything, and they came up toward me, and they were snarling and growling and whatever, and I thought, oh my goodness. They even kind of attacked each other. I mean, they were like, that's what they do, they're attack dogs. And um, so I quickly got by and, and then went on up to the waterfall. Then I realized coming back, I had to pass them again. And what was I going to do? Because there's no other way to go, just this one way. So I had to think of strategy. Um, and <laughs> the only thing I could think of was to be so wrapped up in my own world that I'm invisible to them that they don't even exist. So I started whistling, um, oh, I love to go wandering along, you know, just like I was having a wonderful backpacking trip and, you know, the whole thing. And I so baffled them. They came up, rah, 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 and then all of a sudden they just didn't know what to do. And I thought, wow, so it's all in the expression and how you feel inside, um, what is perceived or picked up by others. Uh, or what I, <laughs> what I wanted to do, but I didn't have quite have the nerve to do, was you're doing a good job <laughs> of guarding the place. <laughs> good, good job, boys, <laughs> that kind of thing. I think that would absolutely baffle them, but I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> And so, um, because that's what they're, everybody has a dog. Yeah. There isn't anyone that doesn't have a dog here. And most of them are intimidating. And there's a big sign up there at the, uh, where you sign up to go uh, up further, up to the waterfall, and it says, beware of the dog. Well, this huge, monstrous dog comes out. And um, I'm looking at him, and I saw oh, your nails need clipping, and you've got a limp, and you know I'm kind of talking to him about some of his problems, and oh, he just came and just leaned up against me like, you know, <laughs> you know all about my my problems. <laughs> well, that was one of the things when I talked about the world of separation. Um, it's divide and conquer has been the way of of every system, divide and conquer. In other words, um, we've become slaves, we've become wary of each other, uh, there hasn't been a lot of truth, it's been manipulative. And so, um, in a place like else, um, coming here, I realize nobody gives any information <laughs> It's very hard to communicate anything in this place. And I thought, well, why is that? And then I find out little tidbits of things that have gone on here. And I go back to even when the natives were here and the Spanish came in and the whole thing, it was a lack of trust in each other. There's no trust. And the whole thing about this new age of peace that's coming, a new world and new evolution of man. Man is going to change. Man has to change. Uh, cannot exist in that world of separation any longer. And that's going to be uh, through love. And love is the eternal energy. 
It's uh, universal energy and eternal. And it's here, and when we get to that core of knowing that, then it won't be any of the suspicion and um, inability to, it, it will be just pure love, pure love. And you just come with that, and there is no game playing, there is no one-upsmans, we all are come from the same source, we're all one. <laughs> And it's not a game of hierarchy. I mean, none of that will even exist. It will be like it was in the beginning. One with everything. And so I'm really looking forward to it. I just am having a difficult time in this bridge between the two worlds. They call it the Rainbow Bridge, where we all will come together. And uh, it's happening now and in so many ways and it, it's heartening, but it's not that I feel like we're there yet. In fact, it's rather discouraging at times. It's the kind of thing where you want to go ahead, you want to be creative. That's why I wear the rainbow. I wear, I wear the way I want to feel. So I found this and this is um, Aboriginal from Australia. So they do the dot painting. And um, this is the oneness that they believe in. It's all done from that and the color and it's the rainbow colors. And the other thing is it's made of mohair and sheep's wool from Australia. Mm. I feel like I'm getting a big hug from the sheep when I put it on. So when they say, wear your art, <laughs> When I saw this and I got this at a thrift, thrift store, <laughs> which I just said, That's oh, a good find. It's not a good find. I mean, I just saw it. I said, Whoa. <laughs> so, as we're going through this rainbow bridge right now, um, to wear the rainbow and experience the hug and the warmth and the oneness. And that's why I uh, gravitate toward um, a studio like this or art because I feel it's an expression, it's many expressions, but it's um, the core of what humankind is all about. We are here to create and in all ways and hooray for the diversity <laughs> of thought, of medium, of interpretation, mm -hmm. hooray for that. And when we can accept everything um, as being, that we're a part of all of that, and there's not one upsmanship, and there's not a ladder that you have to climb, and you don't have to get to the top, the caterpillar ladder, you don't. Just be and use the energy of the universe, which is love. And you got it. That's nice. <laughs> and where there has been um, destruction of Earth, the Earth Mother, uh, where colors of waste have been put upon her, where destruction has happened in all kinds of ways, there are what we might call protectors. And I always feel like the mountains are giant protectors and they see all know all <laughs> kind of thing and so when the energies um, around them are not of the highest good they're like the protectors and warriors <laughs> and they send messages you're not welcome you're not welcome here I've heard so many people tell me that, or those that came here in the first place to Taos and never left, <laughs> and all the artists that, I mean, it's just an amazing mellow of artists here, attracted for all the reasons that, um, that Earth is beautiful and, and has all this. But by the same token, there is um, a darkness 
a protector, the mountains want to protect, and so much has gone down that is not for the highest good. And I think especially the haves and the have-nots in this area, because the, the indigenous people <clears throat> are struggling, and yet they have been the caretakers of the land forever. I watched the buffalo herd as I went up there, and I thought, Wow, I'm seeing a herd of 22 buffalo. Where's the buffalo herd? It's just off to, so going up, um, it's to the right. Mm -hmm. That, because the right is all of the mesa. It's the, yeah. Yeah, and, but there's, there are 22. I talked to the, the um, man who has them. Mm -hmm. And he knew Muna and everything. And so he, uh, he stopped and he said he had 22 buffalo there. And they do eat the buffalo meat and take care of them and everything. But they were just out grazing in the, in the sage and the snow and the <laughs> mountain behind them. And I looked at that scene and I thought, this is how it should be. This is exactly. Give me a home where the buffalo roam. <laughs> and so it was just picture perfect seeing that this morning. And it was funny because I said a little prayer that that would be the way of the future. And then I chuckled to myself and I said, but man may not be here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it'll just, it'll be the animals again with, um, who, who have carried their original instructions. So when I was walking today, I had this feeling like, oh, I did this way back in the fall. Went up to see the waterfall and did all this. Now these months later, I'm doing it. Will it be the last time? And that was one of the things that, because there's so many things that when I came to New Mexico, I wanted to do. I wanted to get back to Chaco Canyon. I want to go down the Rio Grande and walk some of those trails. And I, I want to, um, I want to experience the ETs at uh, Roswell, and <laughs> I don't know, there's just so many things out here that I want to do if I were a tourist, but I'm not a tourist. The reason I'm in New Mexico is to help Mother Earth. So Mother Earth's going to have to show me what, what, what's needed next. And the night I got Texas. I don't want to go to Texas. Why do I want to go to Texas? Oh well. <laughs> Might have to do with the oil and gas. When I flew over there it looked like an alien planet looking down at all the oil things. I mean just an alien planet. It didn't look like anywhere I would ever have assumed is here. So I don't know whether that's something to pay attention to or not. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But I'm content right in this moment. And um, just being, just being in the moment, <laughs> which is the most important thing. Consciously being in the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that's the part of the equation everybody forgets. <laughs> 